before you. Jesus said to him. And he answered, Domine, Fideon, Lord, that I might see. Lord, that I might see. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. We turn to our Blessed Mother that we might see. She is the woman of faith. And faith is that which gives us the vision past this world into eternity. So let us ask for the gift of the Holy Ghost to see beyond our world, to see into the eternal that God has prepared for those who love him. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Holy Father asked St. Francis de Sales, go and see this woman who is accredited as a saint. Tell me, is she really a saint? So the good bishop began his trek to see this woman. When he got to her house, she invited him in. And he said, my shoes are dirty. Please clean them. What? She looked at him and said, are you crazy? I don't go around cleaning shoes for priests. The report came back to the Holy Father. She's not holy. She's not holy. What was it that St. Francis de Sales was testing her on? Humility. Every construction of a high rise in the world has to make this particular evaluation. How deep must we go to raise this building as high as we want it to go, right? So the depths determine the heights. In the spiritual life, it is the same. The more I will allow myself to be humbled in this world, the greater in the kingdom of heaven I shall rise. Most of us, like Shakespeare says, we live in the shallows of life and never enter into the depths that God sends us to. It's like the tide that comes in. When you're surfing, you wait for that water to rush out and you get onto that water rushing out and you can get out fast. But if you wait too long and the water's already out, then you're struggling against the tide. And so it is that God gives us land. Because in Lent, what did our Lord Jesus Christ do? He humbled himself. He fasted. He prayed. He gave alms. He did everything that was necessary to build up the man that you and I are. Because he is Christ, the Son of Man. He represents all humanity. And so he goes into the desert to teach us that the more we release ourselves from the cares of this world and enter into the cares of eternity, the more we will humble ourselves, the more we shall one day be exalted in the kingdom of heaven. So the first thing we must realize is that Lent prepares us by humbling us. And that is the first thing you need to do in a plan. Each one of you should have a plan in which you say, what are the spiritual acts I'm going to do during this 40 days of Lent? Spiritual acts. So, 15 decades of the rosary each day. You make the plan, whenever I can, to assist at the Holy Mass and receive Holy Communion, to get to confession as often as possible, to humble myself before Almighty God. Use the spiritual gifts that God has given, the opportunity to make the Stations of the Cross. If we can make them every day, make them every day. If we can't make these every day, we can go to the scripture and read about the passion of our Lord, his humiliation. So each one of us, we want to see, as the blind man said. I want to see beyond, and I can only see beyond if I get into the furnace of Christ's suffering. Then I realize what has to take place in my own spiritual life, which is the Christ life in me. So the first thing in the plan is, Humble thyself. Find the ways to pray. Find the ways to place yourself at the service of others rather than seek to be served. Second aspect is this. 
that once we establish our prayer life, we must then establish our physical fast. I don't mean just simply fasting from food and, and things of that sort. I mean a physical fast in eyes. We're looking at things that are improper. Get rid of it. Fast in the eyes, right? In other words, I will not look at billboards. I will not look at the internet sites that have these things that can tempt and challenge my purity. I fast from eyes and fast in ears and fast with the tongue. All the senses have a means of fasting. Make a plan. See what it is that causes you the most difficulty. Is it that little tongue that wags? Then stop it. And then make sure that you have it written out. Third aspect after fasting is almsgiving. That we must plan to say, give something of our blood, which is a gift of our own financial situation. You help someone who is in greater need than you. Very often people will come up to me and say, Father, this is for the poor. Because we meet them all over the place when we go into all these different chapels. They're there. And so you have an opportunity to give somebody else's funds of blood to this person who is a Catholic who's struggling. So there are opportunities for each one of us to develop our spiritual life, fasting, and the almsgiving. There are opportunities. So you look now and you make your plan. I have my little plan right there on the yellow paper. I say, okay, last year I did this, this, this. This year is different. I'm not teaching. I'm not going to be able to make the stage in the cross every day because I'm traveling. But I can now say, make an adjustment and say, this year I'm going to focus upon the Bible, the words of the Gospels concerning Christ and His crucifixion. I'm going to Isaiah and look up all of the prophecies concerning our Lord Jesus Christ and begin to tie them. <clears throat> I can do that on a plane. I can do that wherever, right? But you make this plan, you adjust your plan each year, and you usually, what I do is increase a little bit each year, because you give the Lord a little extra the next year. The more you begin to find out you're sharing with our Lord, the more He shares with you. This is the way in which He operates. He tests us to see if we're ready to give, and if we're ready to give, then He grants us more and more of His divine love. And that is what the scripture said today, right? This is what I asked the couples that are getting married to put on their little mirror in their new home. Charity. The one gift that is most important, if I do not have charity, then I don't care if you give away money. I don't care if your body is being burned as a, a martyr. If you have not charity, you're nothing. So love, ultimately, is the divine life of Christ in me. If I don't have this love, this charity, I'm nothing. So everything in Lent is meant to develop in me a sense of the sacred, a sense of the divine love that wishes to save my soul. So charity is kind. Charity is patient. Charity does not put on airs. Charity does not rejoice in evil. It rejoices in good. It rejoices in the truth. And for this reason, it gives us the most important ability to judge the church, judge the world, judge ourselves. And hence, we put ourselves up and we say, this image, when I put on a mirror, you see, that's the whole thing is, when I make a plan, I put it on the mirror so I repeat it. If I don't see it, I won't do it. But if I see it and say, that's what I have to be, then I work at that, and families work at that. That's why I encourage the families, take 1 Corinthians 13, type it out, tape it on to your mirrors. So that this is the program that is the center of all Catholic spiritual life. When I do the seven spiritual laws, it is number four, right in the heart of the seven. And that is why I say that it is the goal of our life. It is the best expression of the divine life of Jesus living in us. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how to make a plan, I hope. Now, why make the plan? Because you are in a battle for your eternal life. And it doesn't matter if you're as young as that young lady, or as old as this old man. We are all possessing an ultimate soul, 
a soul that Satan does not want to go back to heaven. So he's going to attack us in three ways. You're going to hear these three ways this coming Sunday. So I'm going to use them today so you're prepared for Sunday, okay? Our Lord goes out for the 40 days. He fasts. He prays. He's hungry at the end of 40 days, right? And what does the tempter say? Imagine if I came up to this good husband here and said to him, would you please make these stones into bread? Would that be a temptation to you? Would it? Could you do it? Oh, no. You couldn't do it. <laughs> Not at all. It's no temptation. It's a, it's a joke, right? But it is a temptation if the person is the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, you have an instinct. Your human nature has instincts. Your instinct for eating is to preserve your life, right? Your instinct for uh, sexuality is to give life, right? Well, people have instincts, Satan tells him. You want to know how to save people? Tell them, give in to your instinct. You hear it all over. Do it, do it, do it. Do whatever you want, right? Whatever tickles you, do it. That's what Satan is saying. Because if you want to gather people in, just tell them they can do whatever they like. Ah, it's the same thing yesterday, today, and forever. When all of a sudden the government gives me butter or peanut butter or whatever it was in the boys' clubs. And I announce it, tell your parents we have free peanut butter. It gets out to the entire neighborhood. In East L.A., I have three blocks of people lined up for free peanut butter. <laughs> now, people want the freebies. People want the things that satisfy their instincts. That's how you gain people, Satan is telling him. Be an entitlement. Be a social do-gooder. Our Lord says, not by bread alone, not by instincts alone, does man live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Live on the word of God. Live on the word of God. That's what he's saying. That ultimately, I must bring people to realize that the word of God is more important because it eternalizes you. If this young lady takes today these words, blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven, and she puts those words into her heart and tries to live them, what's she going to become? A saint. Just by one quotation from our Lord, you can become a saint. Think of the saints. Saint Anthony, the first one to go out and be a monk, right? What did he hear that day when he went to Mass? Go, sell all that you have, give the money to the poor, come and follow me. That was it. He became a saint. One word of God, loved, will make us saints. So first thing Satan doesn't want is for you to hear the word of God. What does he do with the sower and the seed? When the sower throws the seed on the hard ground or rock or the, or the thorns, it's Satan that seeks to take away the seed. Wait, take away the word. Blessed are you who hear the word of God and keep it. That was the, the beatitude our Lord spoke about when the lady said, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that fed you. He says, no, no, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So, that's why the first temptation, because Satan wants Jesus to have a shortcut away from the cross in order to gain those souls that simply follow their instinct. Second temptation, we go up to the Eiffel Tower, which is very high. And you go up there, and I say to you, throw yourself down. Would you do it? No, you wouldn't do it. You know what's going to happen. Gravity would crush you. But Jesus, he says, if you throw yourself down, you know what Scripture says. The angels will gather you up, and you'll float. Not even the littlest toe will get stuck. And, and she will look up at you and she will see you just floating in the air like a superman and she'll go, wow, 
Look at that. And that's the way you gain people. Entertain them. They'll all watch you and they'll say, wow, do it again, do it again. We like it. People like to be entertained. So, dear Jesus, if you want to gather people, I'll tell you, you don't need to go to a cross. Entertain them. Make them go wild. And they will flock to you. You'll be a superstar, not a super star. That's the second one. And what are we doing today in our new mass? Entertaining. We have a liturgical committee. And this liturgical committee gets together, and guess what they first of all say? What song shall we pick? What do people like? Think about it. Think about this too. Down in the Southland here, in the border, the bishops are bringing in the kids from Mexico, and they get a $6,638 for each kid they put into a Catholic home. They're making millions. In entitlements, I'll give you freebies. Entitlements, we're doing it. Entertainment, we're doing it. And then the final one, politics. Make politics theology. Look, he says to Jesus. Look at all the kingdoms of the world. Our Blessed Mother said it too. Every kingdom, every organization, from the top down is corrupted. Even the Catholic Church. It's all corrupted. It's all mine, Satan said. It's all mine. If you but fall down and worship me, give me equal worship, that's all. They're yours. You can be a president. You can be a dictator. You can be a tyrant. I don't care. Just fall down and worship me. And our Lord said, Be gone, Satan. God alone shall thou worship. Him alone shall thou serve. In other words, our Lord Jesus Christ chose a cross. A cross, and he says, when I am lifted up, I shall draw all to myself. And so it is that this is the season of Lent. You are to do battle. You are to do battle against entitlements, thinking, I deserve this. I deserve to be respected. I deserve this. I deserve that. Why don't they treat me this way? I want vengeance. All the things that are contrary to charity, we fall into by the trap of the demonic. And now we have to do battle. And we do battle by fasting. We do battle by praying. We do battle by giving alms. Because if you go to Tobias chapter 22, you find out that Tobias, the uh, person comes back with Tobias, and here the angel Raphael exposes himself, and he says, you know why you received everything from God? I will tell you why. Because you prayed, you fasted, and you gave alms. And when you give alms, all your sins are wiped out. What a cheap way to get rid of sins, huh? Give a few cents and you're going to be completely free. But this is why we prepare ourselves for the great feast of Easter by humbling ourselves and realizing the pathway that leads to salvation. There is no other way but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the royal path. And so the moment we begin to realize we have sufferings in our life, thank God! Thank God! As St. Paul says, I hate to use the word, but he says, it shows you're not bastards. You are true sons and daughters of the King of Kings. So you have suffering, you have difficulty. Great. You have to overcome the suffering and difficulty by placing it into the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you place it into the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, the meaning of that cross begins to give meaning to your life. Hence, the spirituality of the Catholic. The meaning I give to the moment I live in the sign of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this, your Lent is perfected. In this, your life is perfected. So let us not think we, as we enter tomorrow with Ash Wednesday, should think of anything else but those ashes telling us 
Humble thyself this thing. Pray more deeply. Fast, really. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue. Fast, touch. Fast. And then give alms. To show that you have realized that the true treasure you have is in heaven. And your heart is where your treasure is. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray for one another that we may use this time well this year and really seek to control our human passions, our human respect, and to become humble in the sight of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.